Shalom, 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 Israel. This is uh, Captain Paul Israel from Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC. And today's class lesson is going to be on Bible prophecies unfolding part 10. Again, Israel, today's class topic is going to be on Bible prophecies unfolding part 10. Okay, Israel. So on this particular channel, okay, we're going to let this Bible be true and every man a liar. So we're going to get into somewhat of uh, some history on the children of Israel when they went into captivity under the Assyrian Empire and um, they went off to follow the customs of the Assyrian Empire as far as the Hebrew Israelites went off uh, basically following the customs of the Assyrian Empire which of course was going into idolatry practices that the children of Israel had learned from the Assyrian Empire okay so the children of Israel are always learning uh, idolatry customs from the Gentile nations okay in many different captivities and if you fast forward up till today time if you fast forward up till today time you see our people the black Hispanics and Native Indians following American principles okay American idolatry practices that goes against the commandments of the Most High Yah okay so we're going to break this understanding down before we get into of course the Bible prophecies unfolding uh, part 10 series to show that what I teach on this platform you're going to see it on the news okay so we're, we're going to go by the King James Bible understanding the King James Version Bible understanding so we are in the book of 2nd Kings chapter 17 verse 6 to get the history of the children of Israel uh, being taken away by the Gentile nation who was the Assyrian Empire okay of course the nation of Israel who was taken away was the northern kingdom of Israel. That was, was, that was basically the ten tribes of the children of Israel, which consisted of the tribe of Dan, okay, at this particular time. Okay, because uh, the, the tribe of Dan was not uh, put away as far as being a tribe situation uh, at this particular moment in history. Eventually, the tribe of Dan ended up blending with the rest of those particular nine tribes okay which of course the most I didn't acknowledge the tribe of Dan has been a tribe anymore okay but in general they are still the nation of Israel and basically blended in with those nine tribes okay and then you have of course the southern kingdom of Israel which consisted of Judah Benjamin and Levi those three tribes which consisted of the southern kingdom of Israel okay so this is why we have to know history but this particular history lesson is going into the Assyrian Empire. Of course, the Assyrians had took the northern kingdom of Israel and put them into slavery. Okay. Okay. But the southern kingdom of Israel stayed in Jerusalem at this particular moment. But the northern kingdom of Israel, which consisted of those 10 tribes, right? Uh, the 10 tribes, the northern kingdom was taken away into captivity under the Assyrian Empire. Okay. So this is the history a little bit that we're going to relay on this channel. So this is the book of 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 6. It says, In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in harbor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. So again, as you can see, some people can be confused when it says in the ninth year of of Hosea the king of Assyria so this right here is supposed to be like it's like I said it's supposed to have like a comma or separation okay so this is going into the understanding of in the ninth year of Hosea right because Hosea was the king or the last king of the northern kingdom of Israel because there was a split in Jerusalem understanding when you had both kingdoms the northern and the southern kingdom there was a split all the all the tribes was not unified after king solomon's reign okay so king hosea was the last king for of course the northern kingdom of israel okay so it says in the ninth year of hosea right then it says it's supposed to be a comma right here it says the king of assyria the king of assyria took samaria and carried israel away into assyria so we got to find out who is this particular king of assyria okay who is this particular king of assyria so we go to uh some verses before okay we go a few verses up right it says second kings chapter 17 verse 3 it says against him came up 
Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hoshea became his servant and gave him presents. So again, Shalmaneser is the king of Assyria at the time that Hoshea, who was the king of the northern kingdom of Israel, right, that consisted of those ten tribes, right, Hoshea ended up becoming a servant unto Shalmaneser, who was the king of Assyria. Okay, so Hoshea, the king of the northern kingdom of Israel, became a servant unto Shalmaneser and had to give Shalmaneser some gifts. Okay, Hoshea had to give the king Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, presents. Okay, gifts. Either it could be merchandise, money, material, and wealth. Okay, of the northern kingdom. Okay, that the northern kingdom had possessed in a possession, but they had to give it over to Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria. Because Hosea, who was the king of the northern kingdom of Israel, was in self-servitude to Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria. Okay, so this is the king of Assyria understanding that Shalmaneser was the king uh, at this particular time of the Assyrian empire. Okay, the Shalmaneser. So now we go back to second kings chapter 17 verse 6 some verses down it says in the ninth year of hosea so in the ninth year which was the last year of hosea's reign as king in the northern kingdom of israel because you go verses up it says hosea had uh ruled the northern kingdom of israel for nine years so it's saying in the ninth year hosea okay and it's supposed to be a comma or separation the king of Assyria took Samaria. So we know now that we know the king of Assyria took Samaria and the king of Assyria is going to Shalmaneser. Okay, Shalmaneser was the king. Uh, Shalmaneser was the king of Assyria at the time. Okay, as we read in the book of 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 3. So Shalmaneser was the king of Assyria that took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria. So Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, was the one that took Samaria, which was a, a portion of a part of where the northern kingdom of Israel was living at, and carried Israel, carried the rest of those ten tribes away into Assyria, which those ten tribes was the northern kingdom of Israel. So the northern kingdom of Israel got taken away and put in Assyria as slaves. And this particular king, Shalmaneser, had placed them in Halah and Harbor by the river of Gazan and in the cities of the Medes. Okay, so the king of Assyria, who was Shalmaneser, had scattered the Hebrew Israelites that were considered of those ten tribes from the northern kingdom of Israel and dispersed them in different territories. Okay, as you can see, that's what happens when a nation of our people, the children of Israel, go into slavery. They always get dispersed amongst the nations which makes them to be scattered people okay so now now we got the understanding that the northern kingdom of israel were in slavery under the assyrian empire right so now we go to second kings chapter 17 verse 7 it says for so it was that the children of israel had sinned against yahweh their elohim which had brought them up out of the land of egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had fear of the gods. So you see it is Israel. So the northern kingdom of Israel, right, the, the ten tribes, had what forsaken the Mosai by following the ways of the other nations who were the Assyrian Empire. While the northern kingdom of Israel was in slavery under the Assyrian Empire, they began to worship the idol gods of the Assyrian Empire, which was a sin against the Mosai Yah. Okay, because the Assyrian Empire had many different gods, okay, and they had uh, certain gods that they worshiped primarily, okay, if you look at uh, this particular screen that we have up here, right, we have uh, a certain idol god deity that the Assyrians used to uh, worship, and this idol god is named Ashur, okay, this god was named Ashur. And if you look on the background, it has like a circular sun-like symbol behind this particular god deity named Ashur with the um, wings behind him. Okay, with the somewhat like I have this Ashur god had like um, some angel wings behind him. Okay, if you look on the picture. 
And then it says assure. When if you look at the definition, assure, the definition says chief God of the Assyrians, God of military proudness and empire. And it says identify with Babylonian and Shar. So this particular deity Ashur was similar to a Babylonian god named Anshar. Okay, if you look at the original picture of the Babylonian uh, god Anshar, it looks similar to the uh, Assyrian god Ashur. Okay, similarities, but just different names. Okay, but the same similar deities. So the uh, Assyrian Empire had a god deity that resembled like a a uh, militarized god deity with the sun symbol in the background going back to worshiping of the sun god understanding with the wings in the background okay with the angel wings in the background okay this is what the children of israel was doing in the uh, syrian empire when it was worshiping the idol gods of the Assyrian empire and also the children of israel was also worshiping another deity named nisroch okay nisroch was another deity that the children of israel was worshiping uh back then too as well when they were slaves under the Assyrian empire and nisroch is a certain character of an idol that resembles a bird like god okay a bird like god okay so this is what the children of israel was worshiping as well okay in uh, ancient times okay so this this is what the ten tribes of israel was worshiping back then but of course the children of israel were worshiping many other gods of the Assyrian empire so i just had to just bring those two main top gods that the Assyrian empire used to be worshiping okay people are not looking at this and saying how can people even worship these things you know but as you can see you fast forward up today you know many people in america are worshiping a white jesus and we know of course there's no such thing as white jesus okay because white jesus is not biblical okay but you still have the big bulk of the children of israel worshiping this white image okay so now that we know that the children of israel was you know of course making yahweh angry because they was worshiping the idol gods of the assyrian empire okay this is going into of course the northern kingdom of israel Okay, which is those 10 tribes that was worshiping the idol gods of the Assyrian Empire. Okay, because of course the southern kingdom of Israel, which consisted of those three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, were still in Jerusalem serving the Most High Yah. Okay, the southern kingdom of Israel was still practicing Yahweh's commandments. Okay, to a certain degree. Okay, um, now we go to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 17, verse 8. It says, And walked in the statues of the heathen, whom Yahweh cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. So again, the children of Israel, who were those ten tribes, right, the northern kingdom of Israel, began to worship the idol gods of the Assyrian Empire. Okay? They walked in the customs or the statues of the other nations when it says statues of the heathen. The heathen word is going into gentiles okay whom yahweh cast out from before the children of israel because the most High does not deal with idols so again the most High always redeemed the children of israel to what return unto his commandments by the most High yah destroying the nations that was worshiping idols but the children of israel kept following the customs of the gentile nations who are considered to be the heathen so the most High is against idol worshiping from the gentiles he's against it okay so this is what the kings of israel did this is what the children of israel did in ancient times they always forsook the commandments to follow the customs and the statutes of the other nations okay same similarities of today where our people the blacks hispanics and native americans are following the customs of the gentile nations by worshiping their white jesus understanding in christianity and also going into islam practices by worshiping the kaaba stone that's in mecca okay they are following the customs of the gentile nations okay this is what our people are doing today but back then the 10 tribes of israel was following the ways of the assyrian empire which is against yahweh's law statutes and commandments okay so we go further verses down this is the book of second kings chapter 17 verse 12 it says for they serve idols whereof 
Yahweh had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. You see this? Ye shall not do this thing. So Yahweh is against our people, the children of Israel. He is against the children of Israel serving idols. Or another word for idols would be religions. Okay? He's against our people serving these religions that's been formed by the Gentile nations. As you can see. For they serve idols. Talking about the children of Israel. For the children of Israel, which consisted of those northern kingdom of Israel, those ten tribes, served idols. They served those religions that came from the Assyrian Empire. Whereof Yahweh has said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. So Yahweh is against our people serving religion or serving these idols within these religions. Okay? Point blank period. Yahweh is only about his commandments, as you can see. So now, so now that we know Yahweh is against our people serving idols, so this is how Yahweh is going to teach the children of Israel who were, of course, this is going into the northern kingdom of Israel. So now the Most High is going to rise up the prophets to teach the northern kingdom of Israel to turn away from their sins of following idolatry practices of the Assyrians. So now the Most High is going to raise up prophets to teach the northern kingdom of Israel to keep his commandments and come out of the ways of the Assyrian Empire understanding in their religions. So Yahweh want the northern kingdom of Israel, which consists of those ten tribes, to return unto him by learning his commandments. Okay? So the Most High now in this next verse is going to raise up prophets in Israel to what? To rebuke and to correct. The children of Israel from following the ways of the Assyrian Empire. Okay, so this is the book of 2 Kings, chapter 17, verse 13. It says, Yet Yahweh testifieth against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants the prophets whoa 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 wait a minute wait a minute you see this israel so the most High says that he's going to bring prophets to testify against the israelites so this is why in this modern day time we have the prophets raised up in these last days testifying about this hebrew truth to our people that's been following american practices or gentile practices by worshiping these idols so the most High has raised up prophets back in ancient times to correct the children of israel to now follow righteousness which is his commandments as you can see it says yet yahweh testified against israel so yahweh is putting a testifying against the northern kingdom of israel right those 10 tribes and against judah because the southern kingdom eventually had went off as well as far as following the customs of the babylonian empire Okay, eventually, but the subject matter is the northern kingdom of Israel, which is the subject matter is the northern kingdom of Israel. But Yahweh has always raised up prophets to testify against the whole house of Israel, the whole 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, but at this context in the book of Second Kings, it'll be going into the 13 tribes at this particular time before it became just the 12 tribes. But in general, the Most High always raised up prophets to uh, the Most High always raised up prophets to teach the children of Israel to stop following the ways and customs of the Gentile nations. It says, as you can see, the prophets are only Hebrew Israelites. As you can see, you don't see the prophets of the Arab nation. You don't see the prophets of the African nation. You see the prophets of the Hebrew Israelites. Okay? You see the prophets of the Hebrew Israelites. Yet Yahweh testified against Israel and against Judah. By all the prophets, by all the prophets, and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes according to the law, according to all the law. It says, According to all the law, which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. So the Most High always is sending the prophets to teach the children of Israel to return unto keeping Yahweh's commandments. As you've been witnessing on this particular verse right here in this particular chapter in the book of 2 Kings. Okay, chapter 17. On down that the Most High is all about his commandments. And he has commanded the prophets to teach 
Thus saith Yahweh to keep his commandments that he commanded as a law to our forefathers, which go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, our forefathers for the children of Israel. So again, Yahweh is showing his concern only for the children of Israel, not all races of people like they want to like they like they want to promote in the Christian church, which is a lie. So Yahweh is all about the children of Israel returning back unto him by keeping his commandments. Okay, so now now we know that the Most High Yah speak through the prophets to teach the house of Israel to what return unto him. Okay, so this is why we have this channel on Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC to show our people, the Blacks, Hispanic, Native Indians, to what return unto the Most High by learning His commandments, okay, and His statutes, according to all the law, not some, but all the law which He commanded our forefathers, okay, because the Most High commanded our forefathers to keep His commandments, point blank, period. So now we got the understanding, right? Now we got the understanding. So now we go to the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. This is the New Testament. Okay, this is also to prove that Christ, the black Messiah or Yahshua HaMashiach, right? The black Messiah commanded his disciples to what? Teach the children of Israel, okay? To go teach the children of Israel and not all races of people. This is proof right here, right? This is the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. And of course, this is in the New Testament for the New Testament people that only say, oh, we only go by the New Testament. Okay, but this is the New Testament understanding. It's going to mimic the same understanding that we read in the book of 2 Kings chapter 17 uh, on down. Okay, so we're going from Old Testament to New Testament and the context has not changed. Okay, so this is the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 5. It says, These twelve Yahshua sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. So Christ, the black Messiah, is not concerned about the Gentile nations because he's commanding the 12 apostles or those 12 disciples to go not in the way of the Gentiles. Don't even go to the Gentile nations and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. So the Samaritans was kind of like a mixed breed of Hebrew Israelite mixed in with the Gentile nations because the Samaritans consisted of the northern kingdom of israel which consisted of those 10 tribes that were uh dealing with the assyrian empire okay they had fell away and kind of dispersed back to the land of samaria uh after they was taken into the land of assyria so most of them was mixed breed so christ the black messiah did not want uh the disciples spending their time there in the land where the samaritans was because it would be difficult to figure out which one is a hebrew israelite and which one is not because the samaritans was a mixed breed okay and also the samaritans had made an allegiance to a certain degree to follow the practice of the assyrian empire still even though they was uh granted uh permission to leave those areas okay back in ancient times but of course in general the samaritans was a mixed breed of half being hebrew israelites or half being assyrians or assyrians descendants Okay, so this is why Yahshua Hamashiach says, enter ye not. Don't show no concern with this group of people. Okay, because you're going to be wasting your time on teaching this ministry because they're not going to have understanding. And secondly, the Gentile nation was not given this understanding of this Bible like that. Okay, so this is why Yahshua Hamashiach commanded the disciples not to go into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. But don't be concerned about these group of people. Okay. The modern day Christian church of today is telling the blacks, Hispanic, Native Indians that salvation and Christ coming on the scene is all about all races of people coming together and unified. But here you read in this context, Yahshua HaMashiach, the black Messiah, is commanding his 12 apostles not to go into the way of the Gentiles. Don't even go to any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not. Okay, this is red letters. This is Yahshua HaMashiach's word because he's going to explain who the concern is to get this word, to get this gospel. Yahshua HaMashiach is going to make it plain as day in plain English to show who this gospel, who this Bible is for. Is it going to be for all races of people or is it going to be for the Hebrew Israelites? Understand this is the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 6. This is red letters. This is Yahshua HaMashiach speaking, right? The black Messiah speaking. It says, 
but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So the black Messiah is commanding his apostles, right? His disciples that follow him. He said, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to the Hebrew Israelites. Teach this gospel unto them. Okay, don't waste your time teaching this gospel to no Gentile nation. Don't waste your time going to the Samaritans, who is a mixed breed of half being Hebrews and half being the Assyrian Empire, understand it. Or the half being the Assyrian descendants, who are not Hebrew Israelites. So it was a mixed breed who were the Samaritans. But, the, but Yahshua said to the disciples, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to those that are Hebrew Israelites, that know they're Hebrew Israelites. They can prove that they're Hebrew Israelites by family line or family lineage. Okay? They have no confusion of understanding as far as who they are as a people. They may identify themselves as following the customs of the Gentile nation, but they know they're Hebrew Israelites. Go rather to them. Okay, this is what Yahshua HaMashiach is speaking to the 12 apostles on. Okay, you can't get around these verses, man. This is what Yahshua HaMashiach told the disciples to teach unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right, this is what he's telling them. Yahshua HaMashiach told the disciples to teach to the children of Israel, who were referred to as the lost sheep of the house of Israel, on basis on this reason right here, which we're going to read. It says, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 7. It says, and as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You see, you see, you see why Yahshua HaMashiach told the 12 apostles or the 12 disciples to go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to preach unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because the kingdom of heaven is for the 12 trials of israel it is for the children of israel is because the kingdom of heaven is not for all races of people the kingdom of heaven is for the children of israel that's why yahshua hamashiach told the 12 apostles go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel and teach unto them and preach unto them okay and show them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand the kingdom of heaven that is at hand is going into Yahshua HaMashiach, the black Messiah's kingdom that's going to be established on earth forever. Okay, as you can see, the context of the understanding of the Hebrew understanding from the Old Testament on the children of Israel getting the understanding that they have to return unto the they have to return to keeping Yahweh's commandments, right? The same way the disciples had to teach unto the children of Israel when we get to New Testament had to be given unto the children of Israel understand as far as keeping the commandments and to repent as Hebrew Israelites so they can inherit everlasting life under Yahshua HaMashiach's reign okay on earth when it gets established so again the context has not changed from the Old Testament and it has not changed when we get into the New Testament they're all saying the same thing okay the prophets from the Old Testament prophesy only to the children of Israel okay the prophets in, in the New Testament who were referred to as the disciples was only commanded to teach the children of Israel. Okay? So the Bible doesn't contradict itself. But religion, Christianity primarily, right? Christianity religion is not in the Bible, as we can see. So this is a cut unto the Christianity faith. Okay, we're going to let this Bible be true and every man a liar. So this gospel, this Bible, right? This gospel and this Bible is for the children of Israel, as you can see. So now, now that we got the understanding that this Bible is supposed to be preached unto the children of Israel in these last days, right? So now we got the understanding of that. So now we're going to show an older clip that I did um, a while back based. We're going to show an older clip. On this channel, okay, we're going to show an older clip that I did titled The Book of Revelation, Chapter 16, Breakdown Video, Part 1. Initially, this video came out, I uploaded on this channel on December the 4th of 2022. And YouTube had blocked it because, of course, the video was the truth. So, again, the so-called white man don't want this truth to come out. So, again, he tried to block the page or block the video. So, I ended up having to re-upload the video. And I re-uploaded it on December the 20th of 2022, okay? Because he had blocked it a few weeks later, okay? So I had to re-upload it on December the 20th of 2022 because initially it was uploaded on December the 4th of 2022, 
Okay, so in this particular video lesson on the book of Revelation, chapter 16, breakdown video part one, it showed the prophecy of the China and Taiwan war happening, okay, in the scriptures, okay, which was prophesied. And as you can see in the visual that I have right here, you'll see uh, the visual of the Navy ship boats, the waters, and you have like this Navy ship boat where they dock planes and stuff like that. You'll see this visual that's on my video on this particular picture right here that I got from the video that I uploaded, okay, on the book of Revelation, chapter 16, breakdown video, part one, okay, and also you'll see this picture too in the screen, it has the picture of Taiwan on the map, and it has China next to it, and then you got the Philippine Sea, and you got the waters, which I brought out on the content that this particular war with China and Taiwan war is going to consist of battle or all-out warfare in the waters, which I brought out on this particular lesson so again as you can see israel the news is going to say the same thing that i brought out in this particular lesson on the book of revelation chapter 16 breakdown video part one okay israel so i'm gonna upload this particular section on the book of revelation chapter 16 breakdown part one and then we're going to link it in with the news and it's basically going to say the same thing Okay, Israel, so we're going to let this Bible be true and every man a liar. So to my unsubscribers that unsubscribe to this channel, as you can see, you can't stop this truth. This truth is going to still be here because it's the truth. Okay, as you can see, just because you unsubscribe to the channel, you can't stop the judgments of the Most High. I'm just a messenger relaying the message that's written in this Holy Bible. Okay, because this war is going to happen. Okay, the China-Taiwan war with China going against other nations dealing with this waters understanding as far as battle in the water situation is going to happen because this is what the Bible says okay so we're going to go to this link okay as far as showing you the video that I did titled the book of Revelation chapter 16 breakdown video part one that I re-uploaded on December the 20th of 2022 so we about to get into it Israel so look at this clip and then also look at this news clip where it's going to mimic the pictures that you see on the screen. Okay. It's going to mimic the pictures that you see on this screen. Okay. So other than that, Israel, stay tuned for more classroom videos on Kingdom Builders of Israel LC YouTube channel. Other than that, Israel, stay learning, keep this truth, spread this knowledge. And other than that, Israel, Shalom. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 3. It says, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. You see this, Israel? So this is going into another angel that was in the temple that poured out his vial upon the sea, which was that hologram mimicking the actual earth, mimicking the actual earth, right? That this particular angel was pouring his vial over the sea, or over the waters over the earth to bring the judgment of death it said and it became as blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea so this is going into warfare okay warfare primarily your more smaller wars okay if you look at um that taiwan and china situation going on right taiwan and china situation that is what this is getting into because when China attacks Taiwan, they have to mainly center around that water area because Taiwan is basically on a uh, area by itself around surrounding the waters. OK, so this is what that conflict is going to get into. This is the initiation of this particular um, vial upon the sea. This is going into warfare. OK, and there's going to be a lot of blood that's going to be shed in the waters of dead men. Or dead women because we have the women out there that's in the military as well but primarily it's going to be the army men of these nations that's going to be going to war during the china and taiwan situation okay so this is what this is getting into and you look at this news clip that was uploaded back in august i believe august the 7th of 2022 this is a news clip that you could check out that this particular war will pop off okay because it's centered around the water and the sea Okay, so this is one of the judgments on the most side is going to bring to this earth as far as warfare when it's dealing with the waters. Okay, this is going into the Taiwan and China situation.
okay so again as you've seen this news clip it's about to get real okay so now we got the understanding that the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea that's going into warfare okay which primarily is getting into that taiwan and china situation okay Thank you for joining us. Tonight, we're broadcasting live aboard the USS Nimitz. And while we can't give you our exact location, we can tell you we are here in the Western Pacific Ocean. We landed here just moments ago after boarding a C-2 Greyhound in Guam and landing on the deck of this massive aircraft carrier that stretches nearly 1,100 feet long. That's more than three football fields. And about this exact location on the ship, it's called Vultures Row. It is a viewing platform high above the flight deck where the crew and others can observe the flight operations below. Today, the world is marking one year in the war in Ukraine when Russia unleashed the largest ground invasion in Europe since World War II. We've got reports tonight from Ukraine with CBS's Charlie Daggett and from the Pentagon with CBS's David Martin, who takes an in-depth look at the billions of dollars in military aid for Ukraine. All this as the U.S. prepares for a potential conflict with China. Tonight, the U.S. is confirming that they're going to be sending additional troops to Taiwan. That is big news. It is historic because the troops will deploy to the crucial island to help build out a training program amid increasing tensions with China. It's here in the Western Pacific, where America's naval power is on full display. The USS Nimitz with more than 60 planes and 5,000 sailors. Guam is where we took off from this morning. It is considered the tip of the spear, one part of the Marianas, a strategic location used during World War II to launch the bombs that forced Japan to surrender. Today, Guam houses three military bases, Air Force, Navy, and now a new home to 5,000 Marines, the first new U.S. military base in 70 years. Part of a new buildup in the region, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin announcing earlier this month the U.S. will expand its military presence in the Philippines. That's just part of our efforts to modernize our alliance. And these efforts are especially important as the People's Republic of China continues to advance its illegitimate claims in the West Philippine Sea. Take a look at America's military might, from Guam to Japan to the Philippines. The Chinese foreign minister complaining again this week that it's all an effort to contain China and prevent it from controlling Taiwan. Democracies of the world will stand guard over freedom today, tomorrow, and forever. China and Russia declared just over a year ago a no-limits friendship. President Xi and Putin set to meet again soon. These pictures show war games and joint naval drills involving China and Russia happening right now. How closely is Xi Jinping and China watching the war in Ukraine? Xi Jinping is likely watching the war in Ukraine very closely because it has both economic implications for China, diplomatic implications for China, and military implications for China. Toshi Yoshihara has spent his career studying the Chinese Navy. He says Xi Jinping is learning lessons as the Chinese president considers invading Taiwan. The first is the nuclear saber rattling that Putin engaged in at the outset of the conflict. Now, while Putin's uh, nuclear threats did not stop the West from helping Ukraine, I think it was clear that the United States and its NATO allies were very cautious, took Putin's words seriously. And so Xi Jinping might learn that it might be to China's benefit to similarly engage in early nuclear threats. Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher is a Marine veteran and chairs the new House committee focused on China. One of the lessons of Ukraine is that when dictators tell you they're going to do something, you should pay attention. President Biden has pledged to defend Taiwan, setting the U.S. and China up for a possible conflict this decade. If this thing really escalated into a conflict between our navies, that would entail a level of destruction and death that we haven't seen for a long, long time. We're seeing firsthand how the Navy is preparing for that possible conflict in the Western Pacific. We'll have much more for you tomorrow and soon on 60 Minutes.